If you're able, please stand and sing with us this morning. Our first song is God is Able. to you for the gift of worship 
for gathering here in your name, God. And it says, where two or more are gathered, you are present, God. We're so grateful for your Holy Spirit in this place. We're so grateful for the hearts and minds that have come here to worship you, God. We glorify you today through the word, through our music, through everything that we do, God, that we might be changed when we leave your house. In your son's name we pray, amen.
And now if our children will come forward for a few moments together. And you know what? Let's sit right here. Let's sit right here. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How many of you, as you came in today, saw somebody in your family get one of these? No, because I already had ours. <laughs> she said, not me. And I said, well, that's because I already had ours. Well, we all, in our families, all got one of these today. What is it? It's an envelope, right? You think there's something in it? There's always something inside envelopes, right? Right? All right. Hold that for a second. What is it? Papers. Somebody said papers. A lot of papers. And for those of you who have a, a few kids in your family, there's a lot of papers in there. But I want you to first see this. You see this? This is a catalog. It's several pages thick. You know what's really cool? Look real close up here. This is our new church logo. Isn't that pretty? You guys are getting to see it first. Yay. Your adults will see it here in a little bit. All right, and inside this catalog, on the very, well, this is the first page, but right here, there's a pink box, and it goes on to the back of that page. It's even longer on that one. Y'all see it? Okay, guess what? That's your box. That is everything in the church that you can participate and do. Because you know what? Did you know that you all are ministers? Did you know that? Did you know a minister, you're a minister? Did you know that all these people out here are ministers too? And that the title of this is called Everyone in Ministry? So that means everyone is a minister. Which means it's super important for everyone to find some way to serve the church. So... Parents, help your children find the pink box when you get home in the next three weeks. Okay? So, you have the pink box. And then, you know what's even more fun? You know what's even more fun? Hold on. You know what's even more fun? There's the, you know, your parents or the adults in your life have this adult form. You can just ignore it. Because, look. Whose name is on that one? Right there. Mine! It's Natalie's. Natalie has a form with her name on it. And it says, Children's Promise Card. And somebody in the first service said, It doesn't look like a card, it's paper. And I said, Well, pretend. Okay? So we're going to pretend. Yes, I told you about this. You need to just hang out. Chill. Okay. So, there is a form in here with your name on it. And it's on the top and at the bottom because you guys get to do something really, really cool. So this year you're going to pledge your prayers, your presence, your service, and your witness, and you can sign up for all of these other ministries. But on the bottom, you get to tell God how much you're going to bring for your offering each week and how much you're going to bring in the next year for missions and special projects, a minimum amount, okay? And then, you know what's really cool? Is every few months, you're going to get a letter from the church, and it's going to tell you in that letter how much you have given to the church in, in money, in gifts. Isn't that cool? So then you can keep up and see how much you have given to the glory of God in your gifts and your offerings, Okay? Parents, if you have questions, <laughs> let me know, and we will help you or ask Amy. Um, we can help you navigate all of that. Yes, Hope. That's right, because this is, our, she said on the front, it says 2018 instead of 2017. That's good that you point that out. You know why? Because this is our pledges and our commitments for 2018. Clap, Clap she says. Okay. So... These start in January, but you don't have to wait till then to serve or be a minister, right? You don't have to wait until then to give to God, okay? 
Yes, Natalie. <coughs> we know. I'll help you later. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking for the envelope. I knew I'd given it somewhere. All right. So, I'm being silly. When am I not silly? Uh, let us let us pray together. Can we pray together? Dear God, thank you for allowing us to be your ministers. Help us to look for ways to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can go downstairs, but you'll come back up for our communion in a little while. God is good, and all the time, God is good. If you will rise with me, it is now time to greet your neighbor. You have approximately a minute to greet those around you as quickly as possible. When you hear the music start, if you'll be getting back to your starting place, that'd be great. Thank you.
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your grace morning, but good morning too. I am grateful and thankful to say that we do not have anyone in the hospital that we know of. Um, Yeah, amen. Amen. So this morning there are several updates um, from people who have been ill and have moved locations and, and whatnot. And so I invite you on your way out the door, there is Um, You get a a little sheet that has some immediate needs, but there is a more extensive prayer sheet, and they're located just at the doors here and here, Um, and I invite you to take one of those um, and pray over those people this week in those situations. Let us gather our hearts in prayer. Open our hearts this morning, O Lord. Help us to listen closely to the words of encouragement that you offer us. Let us internalize those words so that they become the very fiber of our being and frame our thoughts and actions. Make us mindful of all those this day who live in places of fear and greed, of oppression and hate, of poverty and hopelessness. Enable us to be those who will work for peace and hope for all your people. We lift so many people in our prayers this morning. Many of our loved ones face situations of ill health and mourning, of loneliness and fear, and of alienation and sorrow. Bring them comfort and peace. 
Our hearts cry out for people all around our world who are endangered by systems of hatred and fear. Touch the hearts of these dear ones, O Lord. Make us those who bring messages and actions of hope and faith. Give us courage and nourish our spirits with this worldwide communion of bread and cup. Strengthen us to truly be your witnesses this day and all our days. Amen. So this morning is the first in our four weeks of our stewardship series. And before you go running out the door, because I mentioned that four-letter word stewardship, we're going to get off that ship, and we're going to get on a different one. We'll even put the planks down and and guardrails if we need it, but most of you can balance. And you're going to cross over to discipleship and thinking about discipleship for the next four weeks. And we're going to think about discipleship through our membership vows of the United Methodist Church, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Now, I I have to take a poll. How many of you, before coming to this church and joining this church, were United Methodist? Okay. Okay. How many of you, when you came to this church, became a United Methodist? Okay. So, I'm not going to ask the last question, which is, how many of you have not joined the church and are not United Methodist? I'm just going to assume that if you're here, and if you're here on a regular basis, that you view your discipleship in much the same ways of our membership vows, And then I want to challenge you that maybe at the end of this series, on October 22nd, you and I have had a conversation between now and then that you get your last questions answered. And on Celebration Sunday, we have a celebration of several people joining the church. Because now you know more about our vows, you know more about what the church is about. And so we're kind of at that point of what's stopping me? And there may be something legitimate that's stopping you, and that's fine. But I want to just offer that invitation and put it in the back of your mind. So, the point is that even if you're not a member, you are a disciple, right? Yeah? Okay. And so we're going to talk about discipleship through these five things. And today we're going to talk about prayer and presence. These are the first two of our vows that we take. And because there are five vows but only four weeks, I had to find some way and somewhere to put two on the same Sunday. I'll just be honest. Um, I will also, in full disclosure, say that my husband is also preaching this series, but he's taking five full weeks. And I said, well, that would have been smart. Um, But our calendar, our church calendar, says, We don't have time to do that because we have some other special things that are happening on October 29th. So we're going to only do four weeks. So the first two is prayers and presents. And I want to read to you, um, Troy, this isn't in your script, so don't worry. I want to read to you Psalm 100. And I want you to think about it in terms of being present in worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You are inside the gates and you are in the court. So let us praise and be present. Then our other scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. If I can get there. Not Zechariah. There we go. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, 
For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be hurt because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Let us give thanks for the gift of God's word. Amen. We need to be present before God in individual and in corporate prayer. So first, why do we pray? If we believe God is all-knowing, then what's the point of us talking to God since he already knows our needs? He already knows what's going on in our lives. Well, Prayer is not something we do for God's sake. It's something we do primarily for our own sake and for the sake of our relationship with God. So now we have another relationship, discipleship relationship. Prayer is also an expression of faith. When we pray, we declare that we are not self-sufficient. Did you know that? Apparently not. Did you know that you are not self-sufficient? Okay, good. So we confess that we depend on God when we pray. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, Give us this day our daily bread. When we pray that, we confess to God that we depend on God. Not just for bread, for everything we require as creatures. We are dependent. We live by grace, and we declare it with our prayers. We also pray because prayer is an act of intimacy. How can we say that we have a relationship with God if we don't talk to God about our thoughts and fears and hopes? And yes, God already knows those, but it's important for us to name those before God. Hopes, fears, and dreams are exchanged in the process of prayer, and a relationship is built and continues to be built. We pray to God in order to draw closer to God. Third, we pray to invite God to participate in our lives. It's true, God already knows our needs. It's also true that God desires to meet our needs. But sometimes God does not act unless we invite God to do so. Sometimes the healing or the help that we desire will only happen when we sincerely ask God to come into our life. So how do we pray? Jesus begins his discussion of prayer in Matthew 6 by talking about how not to pray. At that time, the Gentiles were praying to lots of idols and different gods, and they believed that the more words they spoke, the more they praised that god and that idol, then the more they would be blessed. Kind of sounds like some people I know today, but that's going off on a rabbit trail. So Jesus tells us to not pray just using lots of words in hopes that the more we pray, God will bless us. We pray for the sake of a relationship with God, not for the sake of being admired by people. Jesus is not prohibiting public prayer by any means. In fact, we should be capable of praying in public. Yet many Christians, I'm sorry, Amy, I'm going to use you, including some of our staff members. It's fine. She actually does pray in staff. It's just when I look at her and say, Amy, pray, and she goes, <laughs> um, it's okay. At least you still are willing to pray. You knew that was coming. 
Okay, sorry. Yet many Christians do find it difficult to pray in public. What if I mess up? What if I don't say the right words? What if people judge me for my prayer? Right? It's hard. But it shouldn't be. Because all prayer should be done to seek the will of God, to request God's help, and to grow in our relationship with God. So even in public prayer, if you pray from the heart, and it doesn't have to be wordy, it doesn't have to have the $5 vocabulary words, just a prayer, just a relationship, just like you're conversing with someone else. Prayer, though, also requires more than just speaking on the behalf of the person doing the praying. Prayer is meant to be a two-way communication. Relationships don't do well if only one person is sharing their hopes and dreams and worries, right? It takes two people in that relationship. And so even in prayer, we need to listen. We need to give space to listen for God. Now, God may not speak to us audibly, though God certainly can, but we can experience God's leading and direction in other ways. Remember, the point of prayer is not to give God information, but to build relationship, right? Relationship. When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, he taught them what we call the Lord's Prayer. And we will pray that together here in a moment, by the way. I didn't forget, for those of you who are sitting there going, she prayed the morning prayer and then didn't say the Lord's Prayer. It was on purpose. And I believe the Lord's Prayer is meant to be a lesson in the kinds of things that we should include in our prayers. Prayer contains praise to God for who God is. It should contain thanksgiving to God for the things God has done. It should include confession of sins so that our relationship with God is not hindered by them. And it should include supplications, our requests to God. So for whom do we pray? Maybe this is the easiest one. Maybe. It's easy, right? We pray for everyone? Yeah? Okay. Who is everyone? (laughs) We pray for ourselves, obviously, often. Even if you don't think you do, you are. We pray for those who are near to us, our friends, our family, our church family. But we should also pray for our enemies. When we pray for our enemies, even if we don't want to, our feelings toward them will change. We should also pray for the church. That is the capital C church, the worldwide church. The church that today is all celebrating Holy Communion on World Communion Sunday. That's why we have the globe and the colors of the world celebrated here this morning on our altar because it is World Communion Sunday. All across the world, Christians are all celebrating Holy Communion and being remembered and and reminded that we share that bond with one another. We should also pray for our church, small C church. That means this church. And we should especially pray for the church in places where it experiences persecution around the world. And we should pray for the church in all the ways that we fail to live up to Christ's prayer, that we would would be one as he and the Father are one. We should pray for those in positions of authority, government leaders, even if we didn't vote for them, even if we don't particularly like them, we should pray for them. And finally, we should pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Those who are lost, hurting, and alone in this world. Just as important as praying is, being present before God is also important. And not just in my house or in my room, but being present with God and one another in Christian community. Being present in fellowship. We certainly cannot do this thing called discipleship on our own, right? We have to have others who are along that journey with us 
Because we know as disciples, if we start to go it alone, if we don't show up to be with each other, and we're by ourselves, slowly, or maybe even quickly, our spiritual lives die. Or if we're always only showing up to serve, if we're always only showing up to give to others, and not just being present before God with one another, our spiritual lives are going to die. Being present before God and with one another in the presence of God is extremely important in order to thrive as disciples. Being present means coming to worship regularly. It means you will honor your commitment to being a disciple of Jesus by worshiping him and seeking relationships with other disciples. God needs you. God needs you to be present in your prayer life and also present in the life of the church. Just think what our community would look like if nobody ever showed up. What if nobody was here for worship? What if nobody came for Bible study? What if nobody ever came just to fellowship with one another and share life together? I challenge you to go back three months and look at how many Sundays in that time you were in worship. Now, if you can't remember that far back, me, we do have records of that. And you can come and ask us about that. Please, though, remember to sign in on those registration pads because that's how we know you are here. And that helps you to be held accountable to God that you are here in worship. While we're on it, inside those registration pads, if you're a first-time guest, there's a special card in there that I'd like for you to look at and fill out so that we can tell you, you can tell us more about you and I can tell you more about the church that way. But look at how many Sundays you were present before God and your fellow believers. And I want you to think about committing to increasing that number. And now if you're already at 100% every Sunday, God bless you. Congratulations. But guess what? That means you're ready to move to the next level, which is committing to be present another time of the week with other believers. So maybe that's midweek manna, which by the way, there is not midweek manna this week. <laughs> Because we have the bazaar coming up on Saturday. United Methodist Women Bazaar, 8.30 to 2. And immediately after the service, everything has to be torn down. So if you can help us do that, that would be great. But commit to coming on Wednesdays. There's already a meal. You don't even have to pay for it. You can. You're encouraged to. You're invited to. But... That's a meal if you need a meal. And then there's time for deeper discovery of your relationship with God in many, many different ways. So think about committing to that. Or maybe if you can't get here on Wednesday night, maybe there's a daytime Bible study that you can attend. Or maybe God is calling you to start one of those daytime Bible studies. Or even just a group that gets together once a week and goes to lunch and just share life. There's a lot of ways to commit to being present. So earlier, I was showing the children that we have a new church logo, and it is on the front of our Everyone in Ministry book. And what we tried to do here was keep some of our tradition and some of our forward moving. So the top is uh, stained glass. But on the left is the United Methodist Cross and Flame. We felt it was important that we remember who we are and to show the world that what our church is, who our church is. It's one of the Cross and Flame, the United Methodist Church, is one of the most recognized worldwide logos. In, it, it really is, internationally. And so that's important for us to keep. And then we have First United Methodist Church, and then we did like a little script of Bella Vista. I hope, my prayer, is that you're going to start seeing this logo 
in all kinds of places around town, in all kinds of ways. It'll be on anything that has our church's name. This is it. It'll be on the website, on our Facebook, on our Instagram. We haven't set that up yet. Twitter. If anybody wants to run our Twitter feed, let me know. I just don't have time. We have one. I just don't run it. Um, any publications. We're trying to get a unified message out to the community. So then you see everyone in ministry, and this is the catalog, um, a disciple's way, and then our prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness. And on the inside front cover, the very first thing I want you to do when you go home today, if you have not already opened your envelopes and looked in them, because I know you have, I want you to read that letter that I wrote. It's on the inside front cover. And on the very bottom of that page, there's a little graph, a graphic that says, you can ignore this for right now. I'm not talking about that part yet. So there's a little graph that says proposed operating budget. It's proposed because if our bottom number does not match the number of pledges, then we have to go back to the drawing board and fix the proposed budget. Okay? So it's up to us as a congregation to meet the needs of that budget. And that means our operating expenses. That means everything that it takes for you to be here and to be comfortable while you worship, to um, have staff members around in order to have lights on, in order to have screens and technology, in order to have programming that, you know, your kids are downstairs right now. That's what operating expenses are, okay? There's also a place, um, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, I'll get, I'll get to that in a minute because it's the next one. I already mentioned in the children's time that you, when you open that envelope, how many have already opened their envelopes? Just be honest. Okay. That's fine. I was just looking to see if there was anybody who had youth um, or children who had opened them. And I don't know that that was the case. Don't open it yet. Don't. Don't, 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 don't do it. Okay. But when you open it, as the kids said, there's a lot of paper there. Well, there's a lot of paper because every single person in your family has a commitment card, a form. I'm going to grab mine. I didn't mean to leave it over here. I like visuals. So every single family member has a card. And you're opening it, Connie. I told you not to. Don't do it. I know. That's good. That's so good. I'm so glad. Okay. So you have your envelope, and you can do with that what you will. Um, you can even bring that back on Commitment Sunday, which is October 22nd, and put your paper in that, or you can just bring your paper, whatever. Um, but anyway, so here's the book. Throw that over there. Sorry, Amy. Um, but each member of your family will have a form. And I'm actually missing one because there's not one for Heath. But I'll get it because we made extras just in case. You know how computers are, and you put it in a program, and sometimes you'd spit out a bunch of labels and names, and then it's like the person that's been a member here for a founding member never got their label made? So we made extras. So if you don't have one with a name on it, don't feel bad. Just say, I need my forms, and I need my book. Um, so there's a page for each person. The same thing, um, and, the, and you have a page as well, by the way. The same thing is found on both. There's a blue box on the adult commitment form, and you'll see on the children's promise there, there's a, it's kind of an olive gray box. Is that the next slide, Troy? Yes. Somehow, I messed that up on the slides. But anyway, it's a gray box here, a blue box here, and you're going to say, prayers, presence, service, and witness. Does that sound familiar? Okay, so in that, you're going to commit generally to the church in those vows and in those areas of how you're going to be a disciple in the next year. And then on the bottom, I think that's the next one, is gifts. Yep. Now, look at it closely. The top one is the child's one and the youth, and they are going to give so much per month or per year to operating expenses. I think it's important that we teach our children to give to the church. 
then they have the opportunity to say, I will give blank annually or monthly to missions and special projects. So this is above and beyond their normal pledge to missions and special projects. So what we're asking you to do is budget. Help your children learn how to budget. Or help yourself learn how to budget because you have the same opportunity <laughs> on yours. Now there's, a, there's an additional line that I want you to see on the adult one. This is my individual slash family pledge. So in our household, we do individuals. We have um, one, you know, he pledges to his churches and I pledge to mine. So mine's going to say individual pledge. But I'm going to bet that the Gilmores, I I'm using you all day today. The Gilmores are going to pledge as a family. So Amy and James are going to say this is a family pledge. I know some of you, though, have to give out of different accounts for taxes and retirement fund repurposes. So this is your way to do that. So you have your own sheet. You can say this is my individual pledge, or one of you can say this is my family pledge. Uh, if Here's the one thing I need you to hear. If it's a family pledge, try not to fill it out twice. <laughs> don't fill out two forms. Uh, we'll catch it, I'm sure, uh, but just to know that. Now, some of you are going, okay, so you've got all of this stuff on the top and on the back. Make sure you realize that there's front and back. And then your gifts are on the bottom, and I don't want people to know what that is. No worries. Patsy, God bless her soul, is going to chop off all of these bottom sheets because she is the only one that ever knows what people's pledges are so that she can send you your statements. That was a very, very quick overview. We're going to go into more detail about some of these other areas throughout the next few weeks, but I wanted to be sure that you saw it and we talked about it a little bit. If you have questions, come find me, Amy Gilmore, or Janet, or Pastor Brenda in the coming weeks. Now here's the thing. I already told you not to open it, but now I don't. Now you can go home and open it, but I don't want you to write a single thing. Do not mark on this paper or in this book for three weeks. Because I want you to pray. I want you to look very carefully at the book because it's organized differently this year. I know a lot of us just go through and say, I'm always 9702, I'm always 98101, or whatever. Well, look closely. Read the descriptions. Many of them have changed. There may be different nuances that we're changing to how we do some of these ministries. So please look carefully and pray. God may be calling you to a new place. God may be calling you to additional ministries. God may be telling you, you're burned out in this thing. You've given 15 years of your time and of your service over here, and it means nothing to you anymore other than Oh, man, I have to get up and go to the church and do this. That's not what God wants from you. God doesn't want you to be present because of that kind of obligation. God wants you to be present because you want to be there. So pray. Pray over your areas. And that's your invitation today. God also desires for all of us to come together and be in fellowship around the table. Just as we join with people of Christians all around, the all around the nation, yes, all around the world on this Sunday. I mentioned already World Communion Sunday happens the first Sunday of October. And so here today we are going to share communion and I invite you to just, as you walk up, I'm going to even spin this around this way, and just take a glance and realize that there are people all around the globe who believe what we believe, who love God and serve Jesus just as much as we do, and be in prayer for them this day. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks because Without you, we have no purpose. We give you thanks because we are able to come together freely and, and come together and celebrate your life 
and your ministry among us and with us freely. We give you thanks because you gave yourself, all of yourself, so that we may be with you forever. There was a night when you sat down with your best friends, the people that you were in relationship with the most, and you sat around a table knowing that one of them, one of your best friends, was about to betray you, and yet you shared a meal with him, just as you share this meal with us today. And at that table, you took bread and you blessed it, you broke it, and you gave it to the disciples and said, you know, guys, every time you break bread, remember me and share this, share this love with everyone. After the supper was over, you took the cup and you blessed it and you kind of looked around at the faces of your best friends and you said, every time you share this cup after dinner, share it in remembrance of me. Remember me, honor me, and remember why I am doing what I'm doing. Remember why I love you and share that love every time you drink the cup. So on this day, this day when we remember people around the world who may be sharing this in darkness, in a basement, under a tent, with a guard outside, because it matters so deeply to them to share your meal together, to be present with one another and with you, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup and on all those who are here and all those around the world who share the name Christian until we are able to be with you at your heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, God, now and forever. And let us be bold in our prayer to pray as you taught your best friends, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, those who are assisting come forward and also the praise band as they lead us to receive. This morning we are um, receiving bread. You will dip it into the cup and consume both elements at the same time. That's called intinction. And as you come forward, you're going to come through the center aisle. So you all on the sides are going to have to meander around. And right here, we have a couple baskets. And this is just a way and a place that you can return a portion of the gifts that God has blessed you with here. And so you can may place your offerings here. For those of you who have not received your packets yet, your envelopes, they are in the narthex. And as you leave, no, they're in the back. Amy says no, they're in the back of this room. They're in the back of this room. So you can uh, grab it right back there. Uh, I think they're sitting next to Jim Prather. Am I right, Jim? Yep, you're right there. No, 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 no. We want them staying right there. Keep them right there. Yep, your brain went away for a second. Anyway, you can pick that up on your way out. Who do we have? <laughs> Who do we have where? By the way, this isn't my table. It's God's table. It's Christ's table. And all are welcome.
to be here at this table. As long as you repent of your sins and seek to live in harmony with one another and seek to serve God, all are welcome to be here. Come as you will. Praise 
indeed we do need Jesus. Right? I mean, can you imagine living life without Jesus? No. Neither can I. Can you imagine that there is somebody in your life who is living life without Jesus? There is. Just imagine that. And so I invite you this week, your invitation is to pray for whoever needs to be present here in worship with you. Keep praying that prayer until that person comes with you. I invite you to stand. I'm going to go ahead and give the benediction. (laughs) And we're going to sing our closing song as part of our benediction. But since I'm alone today, I have to jet (laughs) over to the other service. So if you have questions about your packets, please see Amy right here. And please help us by clearing out this room in a moment. But do you love God? Yes. I don't, oh, I don't know. Do you love God? Yes. Oh, I bet you do, Izzy. I bet you do. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Do you? Do you love the Holy Spirit? Yes. I like that. I like that. Do you know that God loves you? good. Now go forth, brothers and sisters, sharing that love and that proclamation to all whom you meet this week in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Thank you.